Hey there guys, it's Rick Utsi here with Airgun Web, your home for old school airgun reviews and where we tell you the facts, not fluff. Today we have got the Gamo Swarm Magnum Pro 10X Gen 3i. I think I actually got the name right. Let's get it sighted in. Hey there, before we get started, I want to remind you guys that we have the Officers Club over at ErgonArmy.com, and we also have a Patreon channel, so if you guys want to help us out, kind of help us do some things outside our normal sponsorships, links will be in the video description. So what are we doing today? We are going to be sighting in our Gamo uh, Swarm Magnum Pro 10X Gen 3i, that's a really long name, I don't know what else they can add to the end of that. Uh, yeah, this is the Swarm Magnum, we've had this gun in the studio before, but this is the pro version, which means they've got a different stock. Now we've done a little bit of work with the 22. I haven't even put round one through the 177 yet. And that's what we're gonna do right now. So when you get a brand new gun, uh, we've done the unboxing, we've done the scope setup. So we've been through that part today. What do you do after that? Well, that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna put some pellets in it and we're gonna be getting it sighted in. Now, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is do not try and put your target at 100 yards and think you're gonna have like a lot of success. You're gonna have some struggles. Get the thing in close. Now my suggestion, closer the better, okay? So I like to start between 10 and 15 yards. Today we're actually at 16, uh, verified by the Hawk here, laser rangefinder. Yeah, we're at 16 yards, which is gonna be close enough. I would normally kind of do 10 to 15, like I said, but I'm at 16, that's good enough for today. I've got the standard um, Gamo scope here. It's a three to nine by 40. It's non-adjustable objective. So um, really to be able to use the full magnification, you're probably gonna have to be at 25 or 30 yards. So what that means is that this close in, you're probably gonna use like three to five on your magnification. And what you wanna do is if your reticle's fuzzy, you can, um, oh, you can adjust this part right here, which is, um, what they call this eyeball focus, I guess. This will give you the clarity on your reticle. And then, yeah, depending on your distance, you may have to uh, just adjust your magnification if that's too fuzzy. If you go all the way like to nine power at 10 or 15 yards, your, your sight picture is gonna be all fuzzy. So get your reticle sh tack sharp focus and then um, zoom in as far as you can until it starts to get out of focus and then stop and back up a little bit. Once you get past, like I said, 25, 30 yards, you can use the whole range of magnification, you'd be all set. But up close, you're gonna have to stay like three to five uh, and you'll be okay. So today we're gonna be shooting some Gamo Red Fire pellets. Um, on the Gamo brake barrels, I've found these just work really, really well. Will we test other pellets? Of course. Uh, when we get to the review portion of this, we will actually get a whole bunch of pellets out. We're gonna see which which pellet does the best. But for today, we're just gonna sight in with the Gamble Red Fires. And we're not gonna do any crony tests or any of that stuff today either. We'll wait uh, till the gun breaks in a little bit, settles down, then you get some really good sort of real life numbers um, after we're, we got a you know few mags through her. All right, so today we're gonna go ahead and get going here. The cool thing about these guns is that they have a 10 shot magazine. So uh, back in the day when, we've, when I first started with brake barrels, it was only one shot at a time. The idea of a multi-shot, I know they had it previously existed, but something that works this well and has just been proven year after year after year, I was unaware of such a thing. If it existed, I didn't know about it, and it certainly didn't, it wasn't on the readily available in the market. But the Swarm came out several years ago, and they've had several iterations. Now we're on third gen, and we're with the Inertia magazine. So not only do we have a 10-shot magazine, but the magazine will not advance to the next round until it feels the inertia of the gun's recoil. And then the gun will advance to the next pellet, which is cool because um, it's actually pretty easy, especially if you're running a gun and out in the field. Uh, you cock your gun, you've got a pellet loaded, and you're going, okay, I'm gonna take that shot. And you go, well, maybe I'm not gonna take that shot. So put your gun back on safe and you head off, you know, walking out in the woods some more. 
You come to your next shooting opportunity and you go, oh, there's that squirrel I've been waiting for. And you cock the gun again and without realizing it, you've just driven another pellet into the breech. Well, the inertia mags help prevent that. Um, and that even if you did cock it accidentally, you'd just be cocking on a dead, um, on a dead uh, pellet hole. <laughs> I don't know what else to put it. An empty slot, there you go. Um, but with the inertia mag, after you pull the trigger, it advances. I'm gonna have to get something. For whatever reason, and it may be just because it's dry and dusty out here, but there's a little O-ring and it needs to grab the, the waist of the pellet. Um, and boy, it doesn't like to seat correctly. So I use another pellet to kind of give it a little help. Okay, we're just about done here. Now I have not taken any shots with this, like I mentioned. So I do not know where we're hitting. So I'm gonna try shooting at the paper. I'm just gonna aim dead center at the paper and then we'll see where we're hitting and then we'll start making our adjustments after we have an idea of where the pellet's landing. So once you've got your magazine loaded, drop it right in there, cock the gun, loads our pellet and we are ready to go. Now right here, it's an empty hole and it will not advance until after we fire. I'll show you that in just a second here. Now the other thing you guys are gonna notice, and I've, I say this a lot in my videos, but in case you haven't seen one, I'm not using a rigid rest, and I'm going to, you're gonna see me actually holding the gun. The reason for that is the type of recoil that these guns produce. Okay, I gotta adjust my reticle. Okay, that's good. For me, I have to really back that out to get my reticles in focus. And then you're gonna use this lock collar to lock it so it doesn't shift around on you. Okay, I'm gonna go down to five power. Oh, that's gorgeous, that'll work. Okay, I'm gonna aim dead center, but what I was saying about the recoil is that these have a recoil that will throw the gun forward. And if you put this in a rigid rest, you may find that your groups are all over. So you really need to learn the technique on holding the gun especially if you're gonna be shooting out in the field and stuff, you're not gonna have your rest with you anyway. So if you learn, I'm gonna hold it right about there. I'm gonna hold it with a particular um, grip force. You're not gonna like muscle it. You're gonna kinda of lightly hold it, let it do its thing. Um, as long as you do that consistently, you'll be able to get some repeatable accuracy. All right, first shot, let's see where we land. Hi. And she's going very fast. <laughs> um, definitely getting the telltale uh, supersonic crack. So we hit way high. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna move that down. Now on your scope, there's direction. So if you've never set up a scope before, if I'm at 15, 16 yards here, um, one click isn't gonna do anything. So we're gonna do half rotations to kind of get us where we wanna do uh, or wanna be. And you're gonna move your scope or move the turret in the direction you want your pellet to go. So if I'm high, I'm gonna move this down. I think it basically shows up, so we go the opposite direction. So we're gonna go clockwise, one half turn. That's a half turn, there we go. Now also, when I fired, it advanced to the next round in the magazine. So, we go ahead and just cock our gun. And we're ready to take our next shot. Let's see where we land now. See if we still get that supersonic crack. We're a little bit lower. Yeah, we're just at that little mark above the cider. So I'm gonna go maybe not quite full a half turn. Let's see, we'll go half, and back up a little bit. Another shot. What I wanna do here is just get close. I am. Oh yeah, okay. Really. My eyes are terrible, guys. So, even with glasses, I struggle. Forget about open sights. As much as I like shooting with open sights, I just can't see anymore. That's better. Okay. Yeah, my second shot was just moved straight down, but it was just not quite down far enough. Let's take another shot here. Close, we're gonna come down a bit more. 
Wow, she is really cooking. Take another shot. And then once we get moved down where we want, then we'll move it over to the left. Okay, we're just stacking them there. Okay, so we're pretty close. And what I have found <laughs> is we're not gonna try and chase every pellet. We're, get, we're in the ballpark. We'll take a couple shots and then move that group because you can actually get variations from shot to shot. And if you try and adjust each shot, you actually drive yourself a little bit crazy. All right, here we go. Okay, that's really good. That is pretty much right where I want it. Now let's go ahead and get ready. I'm gonna take one more just to verify that we're right where we wanna be. And then we can move that to the left a little bit. Okay, still a little low, so our scope's still settling in. Let's take another shot here. We may have to come up a little bit. Okay, so... I'm going to take one more shot. If I had moved that over to the left, we would have been way below the target. So that's why I wanted to just make sure we're at, at our, at least our elevation is going to be stable. Then we'll move it to the left. Okay. Um, we're hitting a little bit low, so we're going to come up a little bit. We're also going to come to the left a little bit, so we have an L on our um, turret here and we're going to move that over um, that distance we need to move about half an inch uh, I'm going to go like 10 clicks okay and let's see where that puts us I got two shots left here in the mag it's got a little window here that tells you how many shots you have left which is cool okay we're going to keep going to the same cider and see how far left I got us Not quite enough. We're gonna take another shot. Okay, those two were touching, so we just need to come left a little bit. All right. All right, well, we're out of shot, so let's go ahead and load our mag up. You can get extra mags, which is cool. So if you're out in the woods hunting and you, you know, you are going, planning for a long day of hunting, you don't want to, you know, have to load your mags in the field. You can bring or buy some extra mags and just bring them with you. Okay. Also, I've noticed that the sound is different now. So there's sometimes there's some oils in the gun from the manufacturing process. And with your first couple shots will burn those off. That's where you get that really loud crack and the gun's dieseling is actually a little teeny explosion in there. Um, that's why you also never add accelerants into your chamber like WD-40 or 3-in-1 oil. People will tell you to do that. Oh, it'll make it go faster. Yeah, it'll also trash your gun, so don't do that. Um, but there's a little bit of residue left in there, so the first couple shots will burn that off. Um, and then after that, it should settle down. Now, if we go lighter pellets, we can probably make this thing do the whole supersonic crack again. One of the things to remember when you're watching videos, like um, Ergen Angie's video of the gun, she got her guns cooking pretty good. Um, my gun's not going to shoot as fast, and it's because I'm 4,600 feet. So this is my air cylinder here. This is my compression chamber. And because the air is thinner here, it has less to work with. It's like less gunpowder in your shell. Uh, we have less air <laughs> for this to make velocity. So even though the gun's supposedly so many feet per second, that's always measured at sea level in optimal condition. So if you're up really high or it's cold weather or other things going on, you, you, you know, just realize you're probably not gonna get those numbers, but it does mean you got a pretty powerful gun. I mean, the gun does produce good energy um, and good power. Um, so yeah, let's, we're just gonna keep going and see where this one hits. 
and then we're going to probably shoot a couple groups. A little high, just a little right. I'm still getting a good crack though. Not quite as loud. Okay. One more, and then we'll shoot. We'll shoot a couple groups here. Oh yeah, she's on, she's there. I'm gonna need to work on my technique a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna load this up. We'll shoot two five-shot groups, just to verify, and then we're gonna call it a day, and then we'll get ready to do our full-on. Um, well, actually, I was challenged. Arrogant Angie took it upon herself to call me out in, in, in an impromptu competition with her 177. The, tree, the trick is um, I need to be able to shoot the JSB GTO pellets. I don't think I have any. Um, maybe she brought some with her. She's actually here visiting. So... I think we'll be able to do that video. If you want to see that, that's going to be an exclusive video on our Patreon channel and also the Officers Club. But she called me out, so we're going to have to see if uh, see how I do. She usually beats me, so for whatever reason, she's like my kryptonite that way. But that's okay. Uh, that's all right. We're going to have fun nonetheless. So if you want to see that video, definitely check out the Patreon channel and the Officers Club, and the links will be in the video description. Okay, let's see here. We're going to shoot five shot groups, two of them. Starting with the upper left bowl. One. Two. Four. Last shot for this group. Five. Oh, a little high. Okay. So I'm stringing that a little bit to the right there. I hate bees. Okay. Well, I love bees. They make honey, but I hate when they're near me because they might sting me and I really don't like that. Okay. I'm going to kick us to the left a little bit. Let's see if we can get more centered in the target. Next target. Five shots. Next pull down. Still pulling to the right a little bit. Two. Three. Four. Oh, oh. oh, one more. Five. Okay. I pushed that one. That's all right. Okay. So we're not quite there yet, but we're very close. So what does that mean for me? Well, I got to spend some more trigger time with this gun, especially if I think I have any chance uh, to beat Ergon Angie at her little contest. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to spend some more time getting this thing absolutely dialed in. And then we'll be back, do some pellet testing and have like a full review. But for right now, I'm pretty close. 
close, close enough to actually move to the next stage of testing and reviewing for me. I hope you guys learned something today on how to set up your scope, how to kind of get close and start dialing things in. Remember, get in close. Don't try and shoot too far away. Don't be in a hurry. Take your time. And I mean, today we're shooting the red fire pellets, but I've got a whole ton of different pellets. We'll see which one is the absolute best. But for right now, I'm pretty pleased with what I'm getting right out of the box. These are the absolute first shots I've taken with the gun. So we have a little work yet to do. Uh, we'll see how it does. We'll see how it does. But that's going to be it. If you want to know more about our Patreon channel and also the Officers Club, you guys want to help us out, check out some cool content exclusive there. Links will be in the video description. I want to say thank you to Gambo for sending this out. I want to say thank you to all of our sponsors. You can check them out at my website, www.airgunweb.com. That's going to be it. My name is Rick Hutzer here with Airgun Web, your home for old school airgun reviews and where we tell you the facts, not fluff. Thanks for watching.